Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and thank you so much for joining me for my first video of 2022. The theme for this video is steampunk, and I teamed up with the wonderfully talented Anastasia Custom and Tiamat Creations to collaborate. We decided to use the theme steampunk and customize some Disney animator dolls. Stay tuned to the end of the video for the final looks and reveal, and make sure to check out their videos which are linked in the description below. If you're not familiar with steampunk, it's a subgenre of science fiction which mixes steam engine and futuristic technologies with a Victorian style. It was first introduced in the 1800s, but the term steampunk was coined in 1987 with the novel Murloc Knight by K.W. Jeter. Since then, the steampunk aesthetic has been featured in several movies, has become popular with cosplayers, and of course some of our very favorite Monster High dolls. I was super excited to be a part of this collab because I've had a few of these adorable animator dolls patiently waiting to be customized for a few years now. I've only customized one before and it was an Alice in Wonderland so I thought a Queen of Hearts with a steampunk accent would be perfect for my next one. So we started out with this Disney animator Ariel doll. She had this red hair so she wouldn't need to be rerouted and I thought her expression was perfect. So I trimmed up the hair a little bit off camera, just taking off some dead ends. Now I'm using some warm water to wet her hair down. I ended up taking her under the faucet. Once her hair was nice and wet, I separated it out and then added some perm rods and other curlers to give her some curl. There she is looking all adorable and I just set her aside for a few days um, to make sure that she didn't have um, some extra wetness in the back. And then I wrapped her hair up in this plastic to start on the face up. To start out, I shaped the eyes with some white. And if you're a supporter over on Patreon, I did a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I reshaped this eye. So she has a deep inset lid, so I made sure to go in with black under the lid quite a bit and then just carried it out just a slight bit. I didn't want to give her a heavy makeup look. And then I'm carrying that black down a little bit and then going in and doing some of her, I sort of created a tear duct for her. Now I'm going in with various colors to give her some shading dimension. For her lips, I gave her a little heart detail and then a light blushing for the rest of the lip. I always like to add some color to the ear to give it some realism. I'm adding some white to the nose for a highlight. and more shading for realism. Starting out with a gray pencil, I'm shaping the eyes. And then ultimately the eyes were so much detail that I did that off camera, but essentially I just drew hearts all around and shaded it in with reds and golds to match her costume. 
you can barely see it there and then here's the final result I did go back after spraying it with some MSC and give it some more detail now I'm taking some shades of blue and gray and just making the eye look a little bit more like a sphere This doll was very big and sort of clunky to work with, so I had to try different camera angles. So I hope you can see what I'm working on. Have any of you guys worked on animator dolls before? Let me know your results in the comments below. I'd love to see your work. So here I'm just going in with some extra highlights around the eyes and blending it out with a Q-tip. I'm doing a little bit of shading under the eyelid. Just to give a shadow effect. Adding some more detail to those features. Now I'm sort of dotting out where I want the eyebrows to go. I'm using a mix of my pan pastels to create a reddish pink to match the hair. If you're interested in step-by-step -step mini tutorials on how I do these different uh, parts of the face, like eyebrows or eyelashes and things like that, check out my Patreon. The link is in the description box below. I do mini tutorials, level up lessons, close-up clips every month, along with some other available rewards. An extra special thanks to my current patrons. And this year marks my 10 year anniversary of customizing dolls. So I did a Patreon relaunch, so I'm pulling out all the stops this year with as much as I can share as far as lessons. I'm going in adding those individual hairs on the eyelashes and then highlights with white. I also went back in with a uh, dark brown to give even more detail to those eyebrows. Adding some little detailed dots to the eyes. Usually I'll just do a little dot, but since I have so much surface to work with on this animator doll, I'm making the dots into little cogs or gears to match the steampunk aesthetic. And you can kind of see I practiced on my fingernail first. <laughs> so adding in some more details like the lower lashes. Using a very super sharp pencil. Thank you. 
and then going back in and adding a little bit of highlights to those eyelashes to have them make them pop a little. I also added a little bit of detail to the hands. Okay, now it's time to get started on the costume. So I just did some curating of different types of charms and fabrics that I thought might work well for this look, and then just kind of piece them together. So a great tip for working on doll clothes is if you find at thrift stores, you can find books like this that have doll patterns. And this one happened to have dolls that were the 18 inch dolls, I believe these are. Um, but they had several patterns for dolls this size. So I chose the one that I thought was kind of what I was going for. And then I just did a little bit of a doodle to kind of, um, to kind of see what the overall look might be and then match that up to the dresses that went with it as well as they could in the pattern book. Then I just traced the pattern out on some tissue paper and cut them out and laid them on my fabric. I was really surprised with how well this this pattern worked with this doll. It was like the exact size. So luckily I was able to um, only have to uh, kind of create on my own the outer skirt and um, everything else pretty much fell into place. So I took the fabrics and just using my sketch that I did and the patterns just kind of planned out what what kind of fabric would go with what part of the costume. So I did a little underdress and then an outer dress with sleeves. And then the outer skirt. I also added some sort of long uh, gloves for the arms and tights and then just went through my little bunch of accessories to decide which little accents I wanted to add. So I wanted one particular piece to stand out as uh, steampunk to really bring that steampunk look into this character. So I decided to do a big heart on the front of her using some caulk parts. And this is from an old wind-up watch. And I used some polymer clay to create the heart around it. And then I took a foam heart that I um, kind of smashed down to give it some filler to make it kind of stick out a little more. So here I'm just using that I'm sorry, it's not polymer clay, it's epoxy sculpt. And I'm just sculpting that heart around the clock part. There I'm adding the little puff piece to give it some dimension. And popping that clock part in there so it could dry. Now I'm taking some of these eyelets to add some details. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm doing this before I let it dry. <laughs> I wanted to add some eyelets to give it some more steampunk character to the area that I sculpted. Using some different chains and uh, jump rings. And I did use a little bit of super glue to hold these pieces in place while the clay dried. 
and that just gave it a little bit more sturdiness. And I added some hooks to the top and the bottom when I was done there. Um, it's just adding some extra pieces there. But when I was done, I added some hooks to the top and the bottom so I could hang it or sew it onto the outfit. So here's the little skirt. I kind of used a pattern for this, but added a few more pieces to give it more of a puffy look. And added these little eyelet snaps and hearts. And then I went back with some ribbon. I decided that skirt just needed some more red, that needed some red in the more in the overall outfit. So I used some fuse tape and added a strip of it around the skirt. I used some eyelets in the back using my crocodile to uh, attach them. And that way I could attach a ribbon to the back of the skirt so it could tie. And I just happened to have some eyelets that were heart shaped, so I was so excited to be able to use those. I pulled the ribbon through it and then sewed it on the inside so they can just tie up real easily. Then I wanted to do some sort of collar accent, so I chose some of my different bits that I had picked out initially, and then I wanted to do some something with these cards so I didn't want to just fan them out and attach them I wanted to make sure it was a little more structured than that so I cut out the collar and then cut the cards to go uh, to attach to the collar itself there once I was happy with the way that looked I added some lace detail. And just for the initial attaching so I can push it through my sewing machine, I used some of this just school glue. I think this is actually craft bond, but it attaches it real well to keep it in place until I can put it through my sewing machine. And added a little bit of tool to the back to give it some lift. Back to the heart that I sculpted, I'm sanding it down and then painting it up. And I added some acrylic or some resin to give it some shine at the end. So for the shoes, I ended up not using these shoes, or I actually used the shoes that I made, but I cut them down because I wanted to show more of her striped tights, but I'm showing how I made them anyway because this book was so great, it even had patterns for shoes. So I just used some leather, or it's faux leather, and stitched up those, those boots. So they turned out real cute, but what I ended up doing is cutting off the boot part and shaping them down to just a little slip on. But they looked cute like this too. I was able to use some of those heart eyelets, so I'll definitely use this pattern again. So now I'm getting started on the crown. I started with a base of this checkered pattern that I wanted on the inside, and then I'm using some of this fuse paper. It's like a, it's kind of like an iron-on glue type fabric. And I just ironed that on, and then I attached it to the other fabric, and it fused together. Then I'm going in with a glue gun and adding this gold uh, sort of trim to trim up the edges. 
It started out looking kind of rough, but I was happy with the final results. I took some of these little bead or necklace making bead accessories and flattened them out and added them to each corner and it really added some cool detail there and then a heart gemstone to the center. I also made this little wand using some of these little gemstones. And so now that the costume is done, I'm taking out the curls from her hair. I left her hair in these curls for several days, maybe even like weeks. It might have been like a week or two because I was really worried that once I removed the curls that there still would be some dampness. And there actually was a very tiny bit in the back, but it didn't, um, it dried up real, real well and fast once I removed all the curlers. So I took out the individual pieces and sort of separated them. I used a very tiny bit of this uh, sort of like pomade wax uh, um, texturizing product. It's very little bit on my fingers just to smooth out these pieces and help them stay uh, like pieced out and not get frizzy. And I was super happy with the results there. Piecing out those individual hairs really makes a difference. Then I just wanted her to have sort of that classic movie, uh, similar to the movie um, Queen of Hearts hairstyle. So I gave her an updo in the back and I'm using some needle and thread to hold it up. I did use a couple of bobby pins, but I wanted to keep that nice and secure and sort of permanent, so using some stitches will really help that. I also stitched in the crown. And once that was done, I just wanted to save this part for last so they wouldn't get damaged. I added her eyelashes on. And then I sealed up her eyes with some uh, UV resin. And now I'm starting her to put her together. Her, this is her outfit. I did make her some little underwear and slip. And there's a look at her tights and her armbands. And we're putting her all together. So remember to check out the videos of the other creators in the links below. If you're interested in more learning, there are my monthly rewards on Patreon, and I have a couple of classes on Skillshare for doll repainting and rerouting. Those links are in the description box below as well. And once again, a special thanks to my patrons who make these videos possible. Stay tuned for a steampunk theme collab with my patrons coming in April, May timeframe. So here she is the final look. I'm adding on her collar and trim down the ribbons that I didn't want to show and I'm stitching on that heart and adding a little bit of a key detail or a steampunky looking detail and tying on that little skirt. And here's the final look. I hope you like her. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.